Hi internet, welcome to my YouTube channel UD on YT. This is where I share my journey and my thoughts on everything. I'm too busy to share my theme song because I want to see if I can get through this video in 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, Jubilee just released this video called Do All Feminists Think the Same? Um, I personally, I still identify as a feminist. I don't know if it's becoming outdated or whatever, but I don't know. I still, it just makes sense to me. So let's see how I feel about, uh, this video. Let's do it at 1.25 speed. So by the way, since I cover all different types of topics, like, Earlier today, I just posted a video about, you know, dep uh, depression and Miss USA 2019 on the live to herself. Um, so really just subscribe if you vibe with me and, and then, and then we'll be good. Like the video, if you personally liked it so we can get more people hanging out with us. Okay. Let's start the video. Hey. And also... Oh, Spectrum is now a right, game. So for you, it is the ability to create life, and that's basically what makes you a woman. Femininity and womanhood is so much more than just, you know, getting dressed up and putting on makeup <clears throat> and just the way I feel. It's, it's who I am on a biological level. I like her top. I'm wondering if she's going to be in the Let's see. Let's watch. Men can be feminist. Three. I agree. Two. One. Go. I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie that says men can be feminist too. I feel like I have to be over here. I think most men that are feminists are like usually either lazy, virtue signaling, just want to see tits or access to easy sex. I think it depends on your definition of feminism. Like modern day feminism, I would say yes. Like traditional feminism, like advocating for, you know, traditional femininity and not. Girl, hold on. I already, this girl's going to be, <laughs> anyway. Um, I know what the red braids was saying it seems like at least on the internet i don't know about in real life but on the internet i can 100 percent 100 why did i talk like that i can understand why she would feel like suspicious of a guy who claims that he's a feminist um there have been dudes online who've been exposed <laughs> so i understand her trepidation um, I know some women feel like if you've never experienced life as, as a woman, then it's just not possible for you to align yourself as a feminist. That's how I, I've, I've spoken to or chatted with a few women who feel that way. So I get her, I get what she's trying to say. Now, um, this, this woman here, she's talking about traditional I don't know why she called it traditional feminism. Um, traditional feminism was not about protecting women's traditional womanhood. That would actually be the traditional anti-feminist movement. Um, when I say the feminist movement, like the traditional feminist movement, I'm talking about suffrage, suffrage the right to vote. And uh, there were women who were anti-feminist who wanted women to stop, <laughs> stop trying to vote, get a husband, and then tell your husband who you think you should vote for. So um, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this chick is all right, like off the bat, right? Like if you comment, you didn't even hear her speak. I, you know, I won't be mad at you because <laughs> I didn't give her a chance to speak fully yet, but I just kind of, you know, can already kind of tell. I feel like she's trying to take back the word feminist by inserting conservative viewpoints into it. But let's listen. On discrimination in the workplace, like I think those things men can agree with. I see what you're saying when you're like, there's this performative feminism that a lot of guys do. So if a male feminist is like, oh, I only support like women and it's just only about that, but he's not even talking about how like feminism needs to support men or like trans people or whatever, 
then there is a performativeness to it. Mm -hmm. White Excuse feminist me. voices are too loud. Three, two. Let me think about my answer. It's not that I don't think they're too loud. I just think that's like considered the default. Any movement, a white person is usually the default voice. Um, I don't know if I would say they're too loud. I would say other voices are not, are not loud enough or not promoted enough. So I guess if I was in this room, I would move to somewhat agree. One, go. I somewhat agree like that white feminist voices are too loud, but then I think that they become really good at using black women or black faces when they want to, you know, push their movement further. I, I, Girl, I, there was a whole month where I felt like my whole channel was, I should have just renamed my channel, leave black women alone. Like leave us alone, stop, don't make us, don't use us in your conservative media as a headline and don't use us in your liberal media as a headline. Just leave us alone. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the, the lady, the young lady in yellow, I, I understand everything that she's saying so far. I agree that it's probably not balanced and I think it probably needs to be more equal. I guess the reason why I'm at somewhat disagree is just because I'm hesitant to say that anyone speaking up for their views is too loud. I think that's fine and I can definitely see what you're saying. I just hate like when some of these movements use black women when it's convenient mm -hmm. for them. There's you know, no discussion mean. about mm -hmm. the Latinas immigrant, how they're getting treated on the feminist movement. You know, it's always about either the pro-choice pro -choice side or, or something else that it's more interesting to white. When you think of feminism, you usually think of a white lady. Um, and I think that's still perpetuated, even though there'd be like a lot of black women behind the scenes this. doing a lot of the heavy lifting and often are in a lot of civil rights movements. Mm -hmm. White women have certain rights they need through feminism as other people, but they're just always taken more seriously by everyone. I'll read off a list of public figures and you'll okay. go to your left if you believe the person to be a feminist or the right if oh, you don't think they're a feminist. Okay. Kim Kardashian. Not a feminist. I wouldn't say that she isn't a feminist. Oh, she... I, I don't think that's her number one thing. She went from- I just don't think she identifies as a feminist. I'm not trying to say that she, like I, I think I personally, I'm a fan of Kim Kardashian. I, I respect her. I respect Kim Kardashian. I, it feels so weird to say that out loud because it feels like that's a taboo thing to say. And I don't think it should be taboo. Like she, she's doing the, the damn thing, but I don't see her as a feminist icon or anything. I've, I don't recall her identifying as such or claiming to be, or I don't know. I'm doing her show and the whole like sex scandal thing to like, you know, now she's working in law and civil rights and she's done the whole family thing. Ultimately, I think that Kim Kardashian is a woman that has like done what she's wanted to do. I don't, so here's the thing that I'm noticing when I talk to people about feminism. It's like, it's like there's this idea that if a woman is doing what she wants to do, she's a feminist. And I disagree with that. Um, you don't, if you're a woman and you're doing what you want to do, like you had a, a scandal, you know, a misogynistic type of scandal, right? Like nobody cares that Ray J was on that tape. They only cared that Kim was on that tape. You had that scandal and you parlayed it to this and you're girl bossing and you have a family and all this and you're, you're super woman, you're doing it all. I don't think that means you are a feminist. And I think that is a, I don't, that narrative is really it can be harmful to women because then you think you need to be superwoman to be a feminist. Um, absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. There should be no expectation. There, there should be no expectation f for you to be a strong, independent, do-it-all woman to be a feminist. To be a fem Feminism is an ideology. Um, there are certain issues that feminism is fighting for and you can attach yourself to those it doesn't matter if you're a basic b it doesn't matter if you basic or you doing it all if if you believe that our outside world should allow people to navigate freely regardless of their gender then that is what makes you a feminist not your level of achievement Amy Coney Barrett. 
don't remember who she Amy Coney Barrett, in my opinion, is like the epitome of a feminist. She's literally like a Supreme Court justice in like the highest court of the land. And she totally disproves the narrative that women have to choose between having a career and a family. I, I don't really agree with her a lot on her political stances, but I think more so as just being a role model for women to be on a level of the Supreme Court where it's primarily dominated by men. J.K. Rowling. No. <laughs> Three years ago, I would have said yes, and there's still a lot of reasons I would. She was a single mom, she wrote all the books, she became a billionaire. The reason I would say kind of no now is her just kind of weird anti-trans zealotry she's gotten involved in that kind of undercuts a lot of her other feminist stuff. I mean, I disagree that just for the fact that she expresses her own opinions and now people like literally crucify her and, and really want to like put her under and undermine everything she has done, you know? It's just she has such a big platform that when you're talking like this very extreme stuff about a marginalized group, that's really the issue. Why should mm -hmm. women like with a platform be forced to align with a mainstream narrative of what it means to be a woman and a feminist? Okay, let me tell you, Rhonda Mary, um, I don't know if she truly identifies as a feminist, maybe she does, but just from everything that she's saying, especially in response to this current topic, I would say she's a womanist. Womanism is basically feminism for black women focused on the values that black women have and including trans women into the conversation is not is is not a talking point of womanism so so uh, let's just keep playing and by the way i'm not i'm not saying anything bad about womanism I'm just saying, I think Rhonda is actually a womanist, not necessarily a feminist. Like, why can't her own personal journey be enough? It's, it really comes down to not that it's an opinion, it's that she's spreading a lot of dangerous misinformation. But based on what, though? Because you- See, I've gotten into conversations like this before. It's very frustrating. The guy is trying to say that J.K. Rowling um, is spreading a harmful rhetoric about a marginalized group and the women feel like <sighs> the, these women here are very defensive about it. Look, if you just, if you feel that biological women need to have their own thing and have their own lane and nobody else can enter it and you don't want to talk about it and you probably low-key might be against it <laughs> even existing if you are of that belief you're of that belief but I don't understand you can't argue with some you can't you can't argue your way into convincing somebody else that that rhetoric isn't harmful to them you know, like that, that just doesn't work. You can't, there's no amount of arguing and well, that's just how I feel. That's just how she feels. Why can't she say what she wants? There's no amount of, she can say that what she wants that will remove the fact that that rhetoric is harmful to a marginalized group that's trying to prove that their existence is valid right now. So I don't know. It's a little disappointing, but I'm glad that they're displaying this conversation because this is a conversation that is being had in the realm of feminism right now. Oops, how I don't know if y'all can see. Okay. You don't agree with it? No, it's scientific facts. Like, she's just talking about stuff that's incorrect. And her ideas about trans men have affected legislation that harms trans men getting the resources they need. Mm-hmm. Trans? Right, like... <sighs> It's like the other day, you might be like, this is unrelated, UD, but the other day I was having this conversation with this woman and um, the question of the room was, you know, is, well, you know, what is homophobia? And this woman was saying, you know, it's against my religion. And I, you know, she, she, she was asking, what, why is, 
why is it homophobic if it's just against my beliefs and against my religion? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what religion? She said Christianity. I'm like, okay. And you know, it's against your religion. How? The Bible. Okay. So is it correct for me to assume that this is based on the passage in the Bible that says that it is a, it's interpreted as saying it's an abomination. She said, yes. I'm like, okay, do you understand how, if you believe something is an abomination, that is something that you see as bad? Yes. You see how you might even be fearful. Yes. So do you see how, <laughs> how people are saying that you are in every sense of the word homophobia saying that you are homophobic? Like it doesn't, <laughs> like just be exactly it because that's what you believe believing something doesn't remove the phobia the phobicness of it <laughs> i don't know how to explain this in any other term um you're you're entitled to your beliefs and it's okay to acknowledge that you might have some kind of bigoted belief like you might have a belief that might be stemmed from some form of bigotry. It doesn't hurt to acknowledge that because if you can at least acknowledge that, then you can decide if it's something you want to continue believing or not. Um, it can That kind of introspection will allow you to understand yourself and your beliefs better, and it will allow you to understand other people better. It keeps doing this. Trans women are women. Three, two, okay, one, I know where people go. are going to go. Yep. <laughs> this is exactly what I thought. We're all just positioned here based exactly. on our political um, beliefs and as for how we see um, the LGBTQ. I mean, I think it's also split between, I mean, all the men are on this that side and all the women are on this side. I know, being a woman, that there are certain things that we have to deal with as women that people who are not, you know, biologically women don't have to deal with. I mean, we have to like deal with having our periods and go through that really awkward stage when we're 13 and people who are, you know, trans women don't have to go through that. Trans women live their entire lives as women. They don't turn it off. It's not something that they're turning off and then to come up to them and say, oh yeah, I see you're doing this, but you're not a woman. You know, it's kind of how, do, how do you live your life as a woman? Because so, every single time so, somebody says that, it's, they, they name the most stereotypical things. It's like putting on a dress, putting on makeup. No, it's biological. I was so born a woman. Is, is I, can't, I can't be a man. So I can't if it's, be if a man no matter how much I try. I can't be. Hold on. So when people say that a trans woman has actually been living their life as a woman, um, obviously they're not talking about wearing lipstick and putting on dresses because, because of the society we live in, I'm pretty damn sure they did not get to live every day in a dress in public. <laughs> they're talking about, um, how the person is internally relating to their world. That's what they mean. Um, <sighs> Dang, this is really a touchy subject. I didn't even realize how touchy it is. And this makes me want to, you know, hear more perspectives on it and hear what other people have to say about it. Um, I want to hear different voices on this because um, that woman in yellow, she's, she's very, is very, it's very clearly a touchy subject. Um, so I definitely want to hear what more people have to say. And it's just, you know, chromosomes and that's it. Are the differences just chromosomes, just having children? That's like so hurtful and discriminatory against women because femininity and womanhood is so much more than just, you know, getting dressed up and putting on makeup and just the way I feel. It's, it's who I am on a biological level. Right, so for you, it is the ability to create life and that's basically what makes you a woman. What makes you a man? Or would you consider yourself a man? I probably should. Yeah, I, I'm a, I, I was born a man. I behave as a man. I carry so myself society as a man. So what would I have to do to be a man, a man like you? So, I want to be a so, man now. So we, we can both agree that our society has things that men generally do, things that women generally do, right? If you start to fall on one side of the spectrum versus the other side of the spectrum, then you're going to be treated as that gender. I think it's a little obscure that we're looking at it in such a... Yeah, so it sounds like the disconnect is these women want a space for biological women. And for these women, it's not about gender. It's about the, in, the entire thing. 
it's about the sex, your sex and your gender and what the entire assumption of womanhood means. And the, the guys, they're talking about specifically gender. And usually when I talk, when I, usually when I'm talking about womanhood, I am also speaking about gender and you know, what's interesting these days, if I'm speaking about a biological function, then I, I, um, how do you say, I emphasize that I, I make it clear I'm speaking biologically because usually even before this debate became popularized. And even when I was a teenager, usually when I was speaking about being a girl and being a woman, I was speaking about the abstract idea of gender. Hmm. Basic requirement more so that, I mean, humans are much more evolved than any other animal. So why are we still using just the requirement of, well, if that person has a penis, he's a male, or that person has a vagina, they're a female. I think you're a masculine woman or a feminine man. That doesn't make you that gender. And to try to like deny just basic I don't biological think she facts. I don't, she doesn't know what gender is. See, this is, this is why she's not, I don't know. I feel like a basic requirement of being a feminist is understanding gender because like gender is, <laughs> that is like a basic tenet, a basic concept of what it means to be a feminist, that you understand that because of your what you were, what you got down there, you are assigned a gender role. Yeah, I don't know. See, that's why I don't really, I don't actually think she's a feminist. And I, it wouldn't be surprising to me if she doesn't actually identify as a feminist. We all learn this in high school. Like, let's stop acting like it's something new and different now because it's... No, you also learned what gender is in high school, but you don't, you're not really interested in gender. It's like the hip thing to say. I think there's like a lot of conflating. It's not um, hip. This is why, you know, these kind of discussions, I'm sure for a trans person can be very triggering because she's just, um, she just reduced this conversation to merely being hip. But there are people who are fighting for their humanity <laughs> right now. Um, so I come in Leon because I can tell this is a, and he has kept his mouth shut because I would not, if I was passionate about something, I would not be able to keep my mouth shut. So I have a lot of respect for Leon. And um, because I can tell this is something that he, I don't know if, if he has dealt with it personally or has loved ones or he, you know, very close to people who are dealing with it in, in the community, but he seems very knowledgeable and connected to this issue and hearing conflations and, and misunderstandings and, and those type of, this type of rhetoric is so annoying. Being female versus being a woman. Being female is chromosomal, it's what you're born as. Being a woman is a societal construct. They can align, like yours obviously all align. Um, like you pointed over here, you're like all the men over here. The first 30 years of my life, I was a woman, I transitioned. It's okay. a disconnect with who, what you're born as and what you feel you should so be. So gender dysphoria? Yes. Okay, I can believe it, I 100% can believe it, yeah. If it was she just like- She can believe, she's, <laughs> yo, I don't know. She's saying that because she thinks it's a mental illness. And that's why she's saying, I can 100% believe she, she thinks gender dysphoria is a mental illness that needs to be treated. Yo, if you think I'm wrong, say it in the comments, but I can just, she's now thinking Leon um, is, is, has a mental illness. Yo, let me know if, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but. I just wanted to be a masculine woman, then sure, that's easy to do, but that didn't work. I'm not gonna say I'm male, I wasn't born with XY. That'll never change, and no trans person will ever tell you they're biologically born that way, because if anyone knows anything about biology, it's trans people, that's why they have to get hormones and do all this other stuff. And it doesn't take away your womanhood if someone else is a different type of woman. It's a different experience that shouldn't make you feel less of a woman if they're around or vice versa. Do you all feel like the feminist movement should be fighting for trans women um, within that movement? I mean, it should be fighting for everyone's genders, whether they're trans women, trans men. Right, cis exactly. Women. Feminism is about equality of the sexes. So 
obviously we feel there's more injustices put on women. So hence the name feminism. But the idea is that in society, you, your gender, your gender will not, or your sex will not prevent you from achieving financial power, political power, um, you know, those type of things. Men, cis men, or non-binary people, that's just part of feminism. I don't think so. I think it defeats the entire movement. Every feminist You're a should womanist. be pro-choice. You're not really a feminist. Three, two, one, go. I didn't even hear the question. Sorry. Should be pro-choice. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to strongly disagree. I do not believe every feminist should should be pro-choice. Um, I think in the feminist movement, we're we're obviously going to fight for pro-choice, but pers on an individual level, I don't think you personally have to be, um, like, I think, how do I say this? I think you can still be a feminist, but even if you personally are vehemently against, um, uh, that. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. I consider myself to be a pro-life feminist, and I think that the idea that um, we can tell women- But here, here, but here's my caveat. Um, I'm not okay for uh, fighting to remove a woman's choice though, okay? That's not okay to me. And that they can't identify as feminists unless they say that they're pro-choice goes totally against everything that feminism stands for. I agree with that. And I think there's actually something that's beautiful about womanhood and women in general, and something that kind of shows ways that modern feminism has kind of been a little exclusionary because women come from all different backgrounds and thought processes. And I think we should support the freedom of choice, the freedom of speech, regardless of the lifestyle that that woman wants to choose. If you personally feel you're pro-life, that's fine. Feminism as a movement should be pro-choice to allow anyone to choose yeah, whatever path they want to have, whether they want to have children or not have children or have abortions or whatever. But if feminism is pro-life, then you've blocked one group of people from choosing whether they want to have abortions or their own family planning. One of the pushbacks that I would just love to give is I believe okay, that- so you do fight, okay. Now, if you're pushing back on, on a statement like that, then you are fighting to make this issue no longer a choice. Um, Yo, know, from the beginning, <laughs> So I don't think yellow shirt is a feminist. I think yellow shirt is a womanist. And I think I, I don't know what blue shirt is. Abortion is wildly discriminatory against women and against people with disabilities. Baby girls are aborted at a higher rate, which is so sexist. And so I truly don't think that you can be a feminist who is pro-choice because these are discriminatory practices. Yo, somebody called Tommy Lauren, told her to dye her hair brown and come on here, play a feminist. No, I don't. This she this woman sounds like she's trying to get on Fox News and she's going undercover <laughs> from be, from beginning, yo. <laughs> right? Like I can understand yellow shirt being here cuz she's a womanist and that is like kind of falls into the feminist umbrella, but I don't Yo, I think blue shirt is sucks. So I am pro-choice. Um, I feel like somebody should have whatever type of choice that they want to make. They should have an equal say as far as, hey, this is my body. I want to be able to have an abortion or just as equally, I want to say I'm going to have this baby. So, um, and I do believe it's 100% up to the woman. A feminist should probably be more aligned with giving someone their own choice. Menstrual products should be free. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, I think one, everybody go. should agree with that. Okay. Just being Such able to provide, um, for example, on the low income school, you know, there's a lot of girls that cannot afford them, you know, and there's a shame to ask for it. I mean, I, I personally believe that anything that you didn't, I guess, ask for, like menstrual cycles or even, I mean, if you get into healthcare, I think that's, that should be all be added on. I believe that everyone should be compensated for their labor, and I believe that creating and producing menstrual products, it's a service and that people should get paid. Yeah, you probably, you're probably totally fine um, with. Uh, AIDS medication being $500 too. Like, I'm so serious. This girl wants to work for Fox News. Nobody's saying that they won't get paid because like you said, you were born a woman. 
you didn't actually have periods, so now you have to go out and pay taxes on, you know, you have to pay more taxes than exactly. I do because I don't have to buy tampons or whatever, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Is this like a pandemic of women like bleeding through their clothes or something? Because I've worked with low income families. This is never an issue I've ever heard other than on. It doesn't matter if it's a big deal issue or not. Like, it, things don't have to be this huge issue. It's just the print on principle. Do you think it should be free? It doesn't matter if we've been going all this long with it not being free. So it's not even that big of a like. It's not. It's it's not that deep. Just on principle, do you feel it should be free? There doesn't need to be a pan a panorama or a big oh my gosh issue. It's just simply based on your principles. Should it be free or not? Like it's that basic. So. <laughs> She, if this is her logic, then she feels the only things that should be changed in life are things that erupted into a big problem, which, you know, that's how some people live their lives. But. Social media. Now, are there instances or may there be segments in people's lives where they need like, like things or they need help or they need the community to get behind them? Absolutely. But I don't think it's this huge crisis. That Nobody said it's a huge crisis. It's, it's, it was just a question. Everybody's making it out to me. I just have not seen It's just a question, yo. She. I'm real interested in what her uh, search history look like. I'm real interested to see which, what app is she be on Twitter? What kind of fight she gets to. Seen it. Every woman should be a feminist. Three. No, I don't think every woman should be a feminist. No, I don't think so. Two, one, go. Once again, I feel like that kind of goes against everything that feminism stands for by saying that a woman has to think a certain way. Every woman should be a feminist instead of every woman has to be a feminist. That's kind of why I went to the strongly agree. Yes, you should be a feminist if you're a woman because you should want equal rights. Going back, I think people have really misinterpreted the word feminism, you know, but most women should be feminist, but they are. I think to me, they are. I don't know any woman that it's not a feminist, but they don't. No, I know women who are not feminists. I know, I know women who literally think, believe that she should have some of her rights taken away um, in favor of giving her would be husband more power. Don't call themselves it because of the extreme feminism. Like for example, I like to serve my husband. You know, that's something I like. That doesn't make me not a feminist. That's who I am. He likes to do other things like change my tire. I will never do that. That doesn't mean I'm not a feminist, you know? And that is officially a wrap, you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can't believe it. High five. Very interesting. Right, Yo, yeah. blue shirt, you undercover. Blue shirt and yellow shirt gonna hang and yellow shirt gonna teach him. Now let me, let me woke you, let me woke you to some real shit, girl. <laughs> yellow shirt and blue shirt gonna get together yellow shirt gonna wake blue shirt up to what black women and the woman is moving is is trying to do out here and you know see if she can get some white allies on that one but anyway <laughs> um that was really interesting so what that exposed to me oh because i'm about to get on my call but what that exposed to me is number one um, this trans issue and where it fits in the feminist space, um, I need to do more listening on, um, so I can really understand, so I can understand the concerns and issues and, you know, what's happening, um, in this debate, um, because for some people, this is real, <laughs> like some people are fighting for their life out here and, um, it's important to for me to understand what are they fighting for and who who is fighting against them and why, you know. Someone help me understand that too. I need to understand why you really now. Blue shirt talking about like blue shirt is really the type of person who'll be like, well, did you know that Planned Parenthood was eugenics da, 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 da. like we're not talking about Planned Parenthood we're just we're talking about we just talking about <laughs> removing this fetus that's not wanted and all in ending a pregnancy because you don't want to be pregnant um I so I'm probably not going to research because there's no, I cannot fathom where am I going to find this perspective that's not really just 
right wing Christian propaganda. Um, but I would now I know that there are women who, um, here's, here's another thing. Cause I was raised Catholic and one argument for, you know, forcing every woman to be pro-life is that you're doing it for the good of the woman. Like it's good for the woman. Yellow shirt even said, it's such a beautiful thing. Having the baby is a beautiful thing. So you're going to force a woman to continue an unwanted pregnancy because you believe it's a beautiful thing, you know? Not everybody thinks it's a be- not everybody thinks pregnancy is a beautiful thing. Um and it goes into this whole debate. Well, then you should then you should be celibate. And then it's like, okay, so now you want to control my sex life. I think that will always be a huge debate, but what's interesting is that you I've just never seen somebody claim to be a feminist and at the same time want to force every woman to be pro-life and the thing about this too is at first they were trying to make it sound nice they were trying to make it sound like you know just choose you know just choose which one you want to be but it's like remove the fake remove the niceties remove that layer what what you really trying to say so those were the two things I took away from this um interesting i would be really interested to hear what y'all have to say in the comments i read every comment i'd love to know and if you don't have anything to say just leave a paw print emoji so we know you were here to the end thanks for spending 36 minutes with me because you could have been spending 36 minutes anywhere else in the world and you chose to do it here with me discussing jubilee feminism So until next time, I'll see you later. Much love, much luck. Peace out.